One of the essential things I look for is the effect posture has. Although some acupuncturists might think of posture as an external, somewhat less important factor, I looked at it as quite primary. For one thing, the posture is what facilitates the space of the organs. Also, the meridians are clearly in the limbs, so if something affects the limbs, it affects the meridians, which means it affects our state of health. So for me, I cannot say, oh, that is just some malaligned fascia in the ankle, because it can and often will affect the rest of the body. <clears throat> and then there is the spine, of course, which affects the nervous system. The channels are Jing Mai, sutras and pulses, that which weaves and creates the essence of the body and that which pulsates. Breath and blood flow are clear pulses in the body. So is nerve conduction. And endocrine secretions are also pulsations. It may be more of a chemical pulsation, but it is also affected by mechanics, that is posture. Life is defined by movement or pulsation. As we age, the movement might lose its optimal vibration. And death is clearly marked by a lack of vibration, lack of pulsation lack of movement. When matter just clumps and there is no movement, then there is no life. One vibration we're constantly producing is in our upright posture. There has to be some movement to support us, otherwise we will just collapse with gravity and become inert matter. And if there is an up movement, there must be a down. In other words, we have to be pushing the ground in order to move away from it. Most of us do not do it consciously. And in fact, most of us do not do enough of this pushing down into the ground. And therefore, we tend to sink and collapse as a result. The need to push down becomes obvious when we try to stand on our hands. Suddenly, we realize that if we do not push into our hands, we will collapse down. In fact, when you handstand, you get the sense of just how much activity, how much lengthening needs to happen, not just in the arms, which are now our legs, but in the torso as well. You can see that clearly there is more length in the torso in this handstand than there would be when we are feet down. The reason we do not have to engage so actively when we're standing on our feet is because we're habituated to that posture and also because we have bigger hips that kind of support it. So we can let go of a fair amount of the activity that is needed and still remain upright. But the price is that we get a posture that bears down, congests the organs and impedes the vibrations of the systems of the body. There is no clear definition of how to define health. There is plenty of discussion on disease, the disease process, the causes, the progression. And although we talk about therapeutics, it is as if we all agree as to where the therapy is going to be leading, <clears throat> which is health, what we tend not to actually define health. This is probably a good thing because we actually do not want to restrict ourselves as to what health might be. And it allows us to define health individually. But still, there are some common components as to what health might be. I suggest that space and light are major components of it, as well as movement or change or ability to change, or one might call it the belief in your possibilities. Space and light here can be physical or they can be mental. When we look at health, we do see uprightness and length. This is not just Avi's observation or Avi's obsession. It is something that people have seen and codified in the language. So it's very old, it's very deep rooted. For example, Chuang, the disease radical, is to lie flat, down, on a bed or a plank. So the so disease has to do with not being upright. 
And from that we get Bing, sickness, which is a disease that spreads like fire. <clears throat> and we also get Zheng, the syndrome, the correct disease. And Zheng is both correct and upright. So Zheng as a syndrome means that which points to the disease. Jian, health, is a person that is erect, that is established. Yao, medicine, as in a medication or a drug, is a grass that brings happiness. And happiness is a drum on a wooden stand, that is a gong, a bell that we sound to communicate with the ancestors. So there is a vibration, a movement in happiness, therefore a movement in health. And happiness, which is related to health, is also expressed as shu chang, or we might call that happily or entirely free from worry. Shu is to relax, to stretch. So again, we see extension. Chang is, to, is free, which means to extend the rays. It means unobstructed. So again, we see the theme of extending, of lengthening. We also have xin, joy. The right part is to need to feel a lack of, but it actually also originally means to exhale or to yawn. And Huan, as in He Wan Pi, happiness, is a bird that is exhaling, same character for exhale. So joy, happiness, involve not just space, length, and uprightness, but also the breath. Or we might say that the breath allows for the creation of space, of length, of extension, of uprightness. In Ling Shu 33, there is a pointer as to what we aim to with health. It describes the four oceans, <clears throat> the ocean of grain, the ocean of qi, the ocean of blood, and the ocean of marrow, and what happens when those oceans are either insufficient or in surplus. <clears throat> Interestingly, the expression for insufficiency is bu jiu, not enough, which literally also means no leg or we might say, without a leg to stand on. In three of the seas, both insufficiencies and excess result in problems. However, for the ocean of marrow, an excess is actually a positive thing and results in qing ji duo li, the ease, sturdiness, and lots of strength, and zi guo qi du, one exceeds one's capacity. On the other hand, if marrow is lacking, it says the brain turns around, the ears cry, the lower legs ache, there is pronounced dizziness or lack of focus, the eyes do not see, there is inattention or the heart is separated, there is idleness and one wants to lie down. Clearly, when the sea of marrow is insufficient, that is ill health. And when the sea of marrow is in a surplus, that is quite a good thing something we might say define as health. To have ease, to be sturdy, to have a lot of strength, and to be able to do more than one's usual capacity. Qing, ease, is a term that is also used in Buddhist psychology to define the positive mental formation, prasbati, lightness, easefulness, or in Chinese, qing an, light and peaceful. The opposite of Qing An is the negative mental formation, which is called restlessness or agitation, ao jia ta. In Chinese, jiao ju, literally to lose one's wholeness or uprightness, the lift. Jiao is to drop, to lose, to fall, and ju is to lift or to raise. The character shows something being extended by coming from the side and lifting it. So here again, we see the importance of lifting, of extending, of uprightness, in health, in creating ease. Because ease is the opposite of the lack of lift, which means ease must be the lift. That means that if we want ease, if we want to feel light, we have to find our lift. It also suggests that the lift is supported from the side, a bit like squeezing a tube. <clears throat> and the best place to do that would be at the hips, at the center of gravity. 
that is gallbladder 27, 28 area. Here, I am taking gallbladder 27, gallbladder 28, not in the inguinal, as described now, but instead totally to the side. So that would be level with REN4, but directly below gallbladder 26, or directly below the axilla. Gallbladder 28 is way down, the support or the linking way. We could also think of gallbladder 27. It is Wu Shu, the five pivots. It is a pivot or an axis that is also something that offers support and allows extension. The point level with REN4, but not total, but totally to the side, which you might call gallbladder 28, is known as Mu Shu. It is between the Mu points, the front, and the Shu points, the back. Let us look at another definition of ill-being. This one comes from the Heart Sutra, and it is spoken by Guan Yin, who is the icon of medicine. In the Heart Sutra, the Bodhisattva is said to be absorbed in meditation and to have shed light on the five skandhas and found them equally empty. After this penetration, she overcame ill-being, meaning that she looked at her own body and mind, in Buddhist jargon, the five skandhas or the five heaps, and understood that they have no separate existence from everything else. And that insight allows her to overcome ill-being, suffering, and arrive at perfect enlightenment. There are two very useful ideas in this passage. The first is that when we look at how ill-being is defined, the Heart Sutra uses the word ku e. Ku is bitter, just as in, say, ku shen, the bitter root, Sephora. Ku has the grass radical above and the number 10 in the mouth. It means old grass. It's been around or talked over, 10 times kind of thing. It is ancient, it is withering, it has no juice, therefore it is bitter. This is the standard term that is used for pain or suffering. E is distress. It is literally written as a person hunched over and is said like that. E. This is very much in line with the idea that ease or health requires that we do not lose the lift. What is more important is that the Heart Sutra also gives us the tool to overcome this ill-being. It is to observe, to shed light, to observe one's life until understanding arises, and then we overcome suffering. In fact, the Bodhisattva, Guan Yin's name, Avalokiteshvara, means literally to observe, Guan, the sounds, Yin, meaning she sees, or hears the sounds of the world, the cries of the world, and therefore she is the embodiment of compassion and the icon of medicine. So of course, Guan Yin is always observing Guan. But here the expression is Zhao Jian. Zhao is to illuminate. The top part is to make something apparent by putting it in the light of fire which are the four strokes at the bottom. So the therapy of ill-being, what supports the lift, has something to do with Zhao, with illuminating, or with Zhao Jian. Jian being a large eye, that is to see or to observe, and Jian in fact is on the right side of the character of Guan in Guan Yin. Although there are no points with a character Jian in the name, we know that Jian will be in the eyes because the character is a big eye on top of two legs. Zhao is found in one place, on the inner ankle, at kidney six, Zhao Hai, the illuminating ocean. So to overcome ill-being, if I use the Heart Sutra and translate it to acupuncture point nomenclature, I might activate kidney six. That is a nice theory. You might say, I have gone around in circles trying to make connections to point names from all sorts of weird sources. And you will be quite correct, because this can be quite a futile exercise in intellectual masturbation that goes nowhere clinically. Except 
that it so happens that it actually makes sense and can be applied to our bodies. To demonstrate it, you need to stand up. Note where your heel is. That is the part that actually touches the ground. And note the inner ankle bone. Kidney six, of course, is between the two. And as you stand, make sure that you are keeping the base of the big toe or spleen three on the ground, because in a moment you will be tempted to lift your weight and shift it over to the bladder channel. Now, press the heel, the part that touches the ground, into the floor. While maintaining this downward movement in the heel, lift up the inner ankle bone. Make sure that spleen three is not lifted up as you lift the ankle bone. You are basically activating both longitudinal and transverse arches of the foot. In essence, you activate kidney six by pushing the heel down and the in ankle bone up without allowing yourself to roll onto the outside of the foot. You made space where kidney six is. If you keep doing this, and it is mostly through a thought pattern, do not over-exaggerate or force it. As you plant spleen three onto the ground and send the heel down and lift the inner ankle bone away from the inner heel, you will start to feel a lift in the inner thigh about midway above the knee. Bring your mind fully to the actions of the foot and the sensations produced in the inner leg. Relax your neck and shoulders. The action here is in the feet. Keep the action going and allow the sensation between the legs to move up the thigh and into the perineum. If you continue the action and allow the mind to relax, you will be able to observe a lift in the perineal floor. Imagine there is a straw between your thighs and you are lightly sucking the straw so the juice or liquid is coming up the perineum, then up the front of the spine. You might be able to feel a lift all the way up to the throat, but for most people it will stop somewhere up the spine. If you keep the action of separating kidney six, pushing the heel down and lifting the ankle bone, inner ankle bone, and allowing the mind to follow the lift of the inner thighs and up the spine, as you quiet the mind and simply follow this, you will find that the lifting sensation keeps rising further up the spine, perhaps eventually reaching the throat. This demonstrates to us that kidney six does indeed have something to do with lifting. And lifting is what creates ease and lightness, qing, and is a way to overcome ku e, pain and distress, which are the withering and the bent over posture. Along the way, we also encounter the inner thigh. This will be a point we call inner yin, basically level with liver nine, but on the kidney channel. And the lift in the spine, which I take as mu shu, the lift from the side. And finally, we have the eyes, the jian part, where we started, which we can take as bladder two. And we will look at the eyes a little more in a little bit. So having combined some intellectual ideas from Ling Shu 30 through, and an unrelated text, the Heart Sutra, we can create acupuncture protocols using these metaphors, but only as long as we can prove it on the body. And so the basic protocol I use for the lift to create space and ease in the body is kidney six, inner yin, mu shu, or you might call it side gallbladder 28, and bladder two. This is quite similar to the idea of yoga of the three bandhas. Mula Bandha, or the perineal lift, the Uddiyana Bandha, the lift in the abdomen, and the space of the throat, the Jalandhara Bandha. The root, Mula Bandha, is created by the use of the legs. It is a hollowness. Rather than mere muscular action, it is an awareness of the inner thighs and of the perineal floor lifting. 
you can see that in creating this so-called protocol, I have basically dug out resources from different aspects of my life and then looked for how my understanding of life and the map of the meridians and point names might come together. Then I had to somehow test the concepts or the protocols that resulted to see if they have a base in reality or if they are just juxtapositioning of ideas that make no sense together. The point is that if the channels represent the sutras, the basic holding sutures of life, then they will include different kinds of lives, different kinds of understandings. If the system were truly perfect, it would encompass every possibility. There would be nothing new under the channel sort of thing. I do not believe the channel system is perfect or complete, but it is quite solid because it has been worked upon and reflected the ideas and experiences of many people over many generations. But still, each one of us has to make that system our own, or, as Jeffrey Yuan says, to create our own resonance. In order to create that resonance, we have to create our experiments, come up with our own ideas. When I come up with an idea for a protocol, like creating space in the body by coming from the sides, as in Mu Shu, I am aware that I am not, say, Sun Tzu Miao. I'm not a giant of Chinese medicine. My purpose in sharing this is not to claim it to be the latest dogma that we should all be adhering to, but simply to show that each one of us, no matter how unknown, can work with a framework that the ancients left us, the meridian system, and churn it around to create new ideas, new interpretations that can have good clinical application. The movement or vibration to create space in the body to facilitate the upright posture is something that I personally emphasize in how I see the human body. It does not mean all practitioners must see the body in this way and that or that it is the best way or the only way. It only means that this is a successful way of looking at the body which works for me and produces good clinical results. As we create the uplift in the body, another action needs to happen the hollowing of the cavities of the body. So we can see in this picture, there's no hollowing and there's no upness. In particularly, it's the low abdomen, the perineal floor, and the upper inner thighs that need to hollow and lift. If there is no space in the lower abdomen, if it is tight or tense or drooping, the organs and the functioning will be tight. One can push and create the upright posture with force, and then the tension will create problems. When we speak of core strength, we need to remember that a core is like an empty space that generates power. That means that a six-pack abdomen might not necessarily indicate core support. It might actually indicate excessive tension. Our core is created by the lift of the perineal floor. This is a subtle action that requires the brain to connect with the perineum rather than any muscular strength. It is about an awareness. Most people do not have much awareness of the possibility of hollowing and lifting the perineal floor, nor of the action of lifting in the body. As a result, they end up with the weight of the torso pushing down into the lower abdomen and pressing into the legs. They walk with a minimal amount of lifting in the legs. There is no spring. And when this gets more extreme, they might literally be shuffling their feet. People tend to sit on the buttock muscles rather than on the thighs or the ischium, the sits bones, which means that they're pulling down and back rather than forward and up. The upright posture is not supported, and there is no space or hollowing in the abdomen. What we see with most people is that there is a sinking into the lower ribs and the waist because this is an area that is not supported by bones. 
hence the importance of T11, T12 area. And because there is no awareness, and therefore no lift in the lower abdomen, the person is trying to lift themselves from the top, producing tension in the shoulders, neck and throat. The head is often tilted backwards <clears throat> relative to the neck. This last point is often misleading because most people appear as if their head is pushed too far forward in a slumped posture. But actually, the slumped posture is created in the upper thoracics so that the neck is pushed too far forward and the head or chin will also jut forward. However, when you look at the occipital region, the tendency is for the head to still be breaking backwards relative to the neck that is being pushed forward. In other words, there is a very strong tendency to break, to congest the occipital area. This is the area we know is related to the state of the autonomic nervous system, in which we name the wind area, or the anmien, the peaceful sleep area. <coughs> to get a sense of the hollowness of the core, sit in a chair with the feet on the floor, at least hip distance apart, but wider is actually better. Be sure to sit on the front of the chair, not leaning into the back of the chair. First, lift yourself up by pressing the hands into the chair and then lower yourself back down onto the chair so that your gluteal muscles are no longer touching the chair. You want to be sitting on the thighs, not on the buttocks. With your mind, rather than muscularly, send the feet to the floor. Let the whole foot spread into the floor. Then send the knees away from the torso, sending the knees forward to the front. Remember to not do this too much with muscles, but rather with the mind. As the knees are moving forward, allow the lower abdomen, including the waist, to open up. It is a bit like they are moving back, away from the legs, which are moving forward. and the lower back is now widening. This allows space in the hip joint because the knees are moving forward and the abdomen is moving back and widening. Keep sitting on the sits bones and not on the buttocks, but resist the temptation to squeeze the lower back muscles to do that. Instead, while you are kept slightly forward by sitting on the thighs, Allow the lower back to move back and feel it widening, as if the spine is radiating backwards and sideways. Send the sits bones into the chair and allow the very lower abdomen, the core, the perineal floor, to lift slightly inside the body. You can feel that the core is supported by the top inner thighs, which are being hollowed when you send the knees forward and the lower abdomen up creating space in the groin. You can feel it more if you press the inner thighs down into the chair. This is creating the sensation of hollowing and allowing stomach 30, qi chong, to act as a fountain, as a spring. Here again, you can create the lift just in front of the spine, all the way up to the throat and the neck. If you now drop the ankles inwards, that is, you push into the before, you will notice that this immediately collapses the lower abdomen, because now the knees are collapsing towards each other rather than being sent forward and out. There is no longer an engagement in the upper th inner thigh, no space in the groin, and the abdomen now wants to push forward and down rather than to hollow and to lift. This shows us the connection between liver 4 and stomach 30. Liver 4, Zhang Feng, the seal of the center, <clears throat> that which confirms authority to the center. And stomach 30 is Qi Chang, the Qi surging. But it is also commonly referred to as Qi Jie, the hub or the thoroughfare of the Qi. Jie, street, has the character of a movement surrounding Gui to confer authority, the same character that is in Zhang Feng, liver 4. 
The character Fong, steel in lever 4, is composed of a hand on the right side, and the left side has earth and growth, which looks like the character Gui, that is the character that is in the center of Jie, as in his stomach 30, the hub, the street. In fact, some dictionaries say that it is that same character, and some say it is land and growth. In both cases, it suggests conferring, the hand, authority over the land, which in feudal times implied a seal. Therefore, Zhang Feng is the central seal. We can see that liver 4 and stomach 30 share a bit of an implication in their names, and we saw that we can produce that connection in our own bodies. And liver 4 is also an excellent point, as it happens, to release the psoas. Ling Shu Tu says that if you need a liver four against the flow, you cause an obstruction, a bending, a turning, whereas needling it with a flow, harmony opens up the flow. Since the domain of liver four as a seal is the center, we can assume that they meant that it creates flow in the abdomen or in the chong. Note that Ling Shu Tu gives us the location of liver four not at the ankle crease, but one soon lower. So we have seen a number of areas that are significant. The use of the ankles and the feet as supporting or dictating our gait, the inner thigh, the growing, the perineal floor and lower abdomen, the throat, the occiput, or the junction of the head and the neck. All these areas have to have some vibration and also be relaxed, or what I call hollow, have a quality of space in them. We touched on the eyes only as a consequence of the expression Zhao Jian, and I mentioned bladder too as part of the protocol I use for creation, creating the lift and the space in the body. Since we started this discussion on posture and the support for the spine and the torso, including the eyes here may seem a bit odd to some. But in fact, the eyes are a major factor in how we create the space of our body, and they do affect the spine quite strongly. Notice how when you're looking, you tend to kind of send your eyes out to the object you're looking at. This action gets exaggerated when we're not seeing clearly or not understanding something, and we try to improve our vision. But it tends to be there almost all the time. Now, Try to look at, say, the screen, and not send your eyes out to it, but rather allow the screen, the object of your sight, to come in to you, towards you. This is not easy for many people, to just have your eyes open and allow the world to come to you. You will hopefully notice that it affects your whole body. It results in a much softer, less tense body, especially in the neck but also in the lower abdomen. You might not have succeeded in allowing the eyes to just rest and let the vision come to you, rather than trying to go out to it. The habit of the eyes is very strong, so you can try it lying face up. Allow the eyes to close and let them sink towards the back of the skull, as if melting down with gravity. Allow this to send a wave of relaxation into the body, through the back of the neck and down the rest of the spine. It will be most clear in the face, the throat, and the neck, but then also, more subtly, in the rest of the body. The eyes have a very strong effect on the nervous system. They are how we perceive the world. Our vision tends to be our stronger sense of sense of perception, and since pain and other nervous system reactions are perceptions, it is not surprising that we can modulate pain and the nervous system by relaxing the eyes. Bladder 2 also relaxes the diaphragm. <clears throat> this is something that is not easily observed in our own body, as in, if I relax my eyes, I can feel my diaphragm opening. That's a little bit subtle, but it is quite clear when we needle bladder 2. 
Let's look at these different areas a little bit more closely. <clears throat> the protocol started at kidney 6, moved on to inner yin, which is level with liver 9 but on the kidney channel, then to mu shu, which is level with ren 4 but on the side, just below gallbladder 26, and ended with bladder 2. Actually, I have many subshoots for these. For example, spleen 3, tai bai, the great white, is also involved in the process because I have to stabilize spleen 3 into the ground when I attempt to open kidney 6 by pushing the heel down and lifting the inner ankle bone. The purpose of activating the foot is to activate the inner thigh. Spleen 3 does a fair job for that, but I often find that spleen 9 can be better. Many people, especially women, have a chubby sinking flesh at spleen 9. It has given in to gravity. Needling spleen 9 at that flesh upwards, towards inner knee eye, gives the body a message to lift. And recall that spleen 9, yin ling chuan, the yin mound spring, has the character chuan, a fountain, something that does spring upwards, lifts up. We also saw that liver 4, another ankle point, is related to maintaining the lift in the groin and the perineal floor. And for many people, stomach 41 is the best point to access this, especially people whose feet tend to roll inwards at the ankle. I do tend to prefer the kidney channel because the lift in the inner thigh then translates into a lift in the front of the spine, which is basically the kidney channel. Many people have bumps in the lower kidney channel between kidney 3 and kidney 9, as if the channel is sinking down towards the ankle. Needling kidney 7, full you, to recover the flow, is an attempt to realign those bumps, again sending a message to the body to activate the lift. At inner yin, you will also often find bumps, even on very thin people. Inner yin was originally used as a trapezius releasing point, and also for constipation, as the adductors on the left side affect the descending colon. Over time, I discovered that this area reflects and treats hormonal issues in women, and many women will have bumps or tightness here. I also discovered, and others confirmed, that inner yin is a point that can be a miracle point for lots of issues, for lots of people, nothing to do with a tight trapezius or constipation. The explanation I now have for this is that the activation of this area produces a lift, produces space in the body. This, in fact, explains its effect on the trapezius also. When the body is able to have awareness of the perineum and support the posture from the legs, the upper part, the trapezius, can relax. If there is sinking in the lower body, the body will attempt to lift up from the top and the muscles at the top will become tight. Supporting the lift from below requires far less muscular action and is far more efficient. I do not tend to replace Mushu with other points. This is because Mushu is below the iliac crest, and if you want to lift someone, especially from the sides, as the kata Ju in Diao Ju suggests, the hip area where there is bone and it's close to the center of gravity is our best option. As any dancer will tell you, it's a lot easier to lift someone from the hips than lift them, say, just below the shoulders. Your next best option is below the ribs, level with T1112, but the grip here will tend to be less solid. However, bladder 49 needled upwards does produce a clear upward effect. Two other points around here are also worth mentioning, although they are lower. The first is bladder 36, Cheng Fu, to receive the support. Of course, this is an unlikely substitute for Mushu, but when I do the back, I will consider bladder 36. This is the area that most people avoid sitting on, and they sit back onto the glutes. And it is also that a point that will adjust the whole hamstring. 
being at the insertion, so it affects the whole posture. The name, receiving the support, suggests that the ancients might have had similar thoughts on UB36. Kawai liked to point about two fingers below bladder 36. This point is quite good for low back pain. But if you want to get more areas, say the neck or the shoulders, for example, bladder 36 tends to do a better job. I look for a jumpy tendon feeling, and it is often slightly more medial than the official bladder 36 location, which makes sense because the inner thigh is quite involved in the lift. Though I am fearing just a centimeter or two medially to the midline. Cheng is to receive, to accept, to undertake, to hold, or to carry. The character appears mostly in the bladder channel. Bladder 36, Chang Fu, undertaking the support. Bladder 56, Chang Jing, receiving the sinews. And bladder 57, Chang Shan, receiving the mountain. The Chang that is used in the head, bladder 6, Chang Guang, receiving the light, and gallbladder 18, Cheng Ling, receiving the soul, we will have a more passive kind of receiving rather than the active supporting of the bladder channel points that are named Cheng. The other point is the fascia that surrounds the greater trochanter of the femur, especially in the front or above the trochanter. I call it gallbladder 29, Zhu Liao, Though this is not entirely accurate according to the text, it is slightly in front of gallbladder 29. To understand the effect of the area of the trochanter, we need to stand up and push our weight down into the legs. Basically, slump down into the leg. Now that you feel this, lift up just from the trochanter, creating space in the joint between the leg and the hip supporting the length of the torso from the trochanter. Sink the weight back down into the trochanter, congesting the joint, and then make the space in the joint again. What you will notice is that the chest responds to the manipulation of the space of the trochanter. When the weight is pushed down into the leg and the trochanter is congested, the chest congests also and sinks down, and so does the diaphragm. When you make space in the trochanter, lifting away from the leg, the chest and the diaphragm now have the space to expand also. So the trochanter is used to release the rhomboids, to allow expansion of the lungs, and to release the nervous system by allowing greater mobility in the diaphragm. Yao. The name of gallbladder 29 has some interesting meanings. Ju means to live, to reside. Ellis translates it as squatting. But Ju to squat is written by adding the foot radical on the left, and the character in gallbladder 29 does not have that foot radical. The two also have two different tones, as it happens. The Ju in gallbladder 29 does not mean squatting, but living, residing. Liao is usually translated as a bone hole, but there is somewhat a different connotation than just a hole in the bone in Liao. On the left is a character for bone, and on the right is Liu, which means to soar, or the sound of the wind. The top part are the wings, and at the bottom we see dense hair suggesting flying. So Liao is not just some nook in the bone. It is like a conch, a hole in the bone that can produce the sound of the wind, that can produce soaring. It creates flight or soaring. It amplifies. So for me, the points that have Liao in them are not about the hole in the bone, as we call the foramens in the sacrum, say like UB32, but it's more about their ability to create some amplification. They're like the sound of the wind. They are very dynamic. The trochanter is the area that allows dynamicism in the chest and the diaphragm. It allows for greater, deeper breath, and therefore it allows us to reside in our body. 
by creating the space in the body. Stomach 31, big one, the thigh gateway, can have somewhat similar effect, but the trochanter tends to be stronger. People sometimes confuse Mushu and the trochanter point, or gallbladder 29. They are both on the sides of the body, but Mushu is level with Rind 4, and it is just below the iliac crest, basically affecting the gluteal medius, or it is on the gluteal medius, rather. And the trochanter point is about three tson or more lower than that, uh, and it is level with the trochanter. Mushu affects the lower abdominal space more clearly, more effectively. The trochanter affects the expansion of the chest and not so much the perineal floor. At least, that is my experience. Our last area are the eyes. But here, it can be the eye or the top diaphragm. So, although I name bladder 2 as the point, I actually often use stomach 9, Ren Ying, the human welcoming, just as often. Stomach 9 would represent the idea of the three diaphragms, the pelvic perineal diaphragm, the chest diaphragm, and the throat or vocal cord diaphragm, which is the in the yogic system referred to as the three bandhas, locks or bridges, Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, and Jalandhara Bandha. And in the yogic tradition, the bandhas are rooted either in Pada Bandha, the foot action against the ground, activating the arches of the foot, creating a suction-like action up the leg and beyond, or in hasta bandha, the spreading suction action in the hand if you're handstanding. And of course, the throat is very crucial to our gait. Bladder two will tend to correspond more to the idea of the three dantians, with bladder two representing the upper dantian, although more commonly most people might refer to yin tang as the upper dantian. As we saw, the eyes affect the whole body, posturally and in terms of nerve tone. Bladder one is referred to in the Ling Shu as Ming Men, the name we now associate with Du Fu. So it suggests the importance of this area in its relationship to hormonal issues. This is something we can see easily because hormonal headaches tend to be concentrated ab around and above the inner eye socket. I basically use bladder 2 in lieu of bladder 1. With bladder 1, you get a much stronger sensation, but with a much milder needling of bladder 2, you actually get a more profound effect that releases the diaphragm, the neck, the shoulders, the nervous and hormonal systems. Occasionally, I will use a point under the lower gums, which some refer to as the tooth fairy, rather than bladder two or stomach nine, as the representative of the upper point. I use this one for people who carry a lot of tension in the neck or throat, and particularly in this area of the lower teeth. This is not the same as TMJ types, where the tension is around stomach 5 or 6. Tooth fairy is below, under the bone, medial to where small intestine 17 is, under the mandible. When the body is tightening up here to compensate for lack of use of the legs, lack of lift in the perineal floor and the lower abdomen, if you relax this area, the body will have a chance to find the perineal floor because we have taken away its compensatory mechanism at the top. So needle, needling under the mandible is a way to remind the body of the perineal cavity. At the eye, we have two other possibilities. I do not use these because I really do prefer bladder two. But it is interesting to note these as options and to look at the names which suggest that the ancient Chinese may have thought of the eye as related to our standing and creating space in our body. Stomach one, Cheng Qi, receiving the tears, is one of them. The Du channel, which we are supporting with a lift, has a connection with stomach one. 
However, it does have a stronger connection to the inner cantus, bladder 1, and therefore bladder 2. Cheng, to support, is of course the same Cheng as in bladder 36, Cheng Fu. So there is a resonance here. And Qi, tears, or to cry, is composed of water on the left and to stand, Li, on the right. So it's an interesting coincidence, given that we're looking at standing upright when we're looking at the eyes. Gallbladder 1, Tang Zi Liao, is a Liao point. So it has what we might term a soaring quality, some ability to move quickly, to penetrate, due to the Liao part of the name. Zi is the child, and Tang is the pupil. Tang is composed of the I radical, on the left, and Tong, a virgin on the right. It suggests that bladder one, gallbladder one, is what allows us to see virgin sites by allowing ourselves the freedom to look to the side, to expand our horizon, so to speak. The same Tong is also part of the character Chong, to rise up, to surge. Here it is used in slightly different form, a modified version, meaning heavy or serious, and it is inside the radical for movement. Tong, virgin, is the serious character, plus a crime, suggesting that the penalty for such a serious crime is celibacy. However, my preference, if I choose to use the eyes, will tend to be bladder too. The purpose of all this has been to make a case study, demonstrating my biases and how I create treatment ideas. It starts with the idea that maintaining space, uprightness in the body, has a great effect on health. It looks at coming from the side as a way to maintain extension and investigates the role of the feet, the ankles, the hip joints in resisting gravity and the effect of the throat and the neck as well. Then, having some idea of what works, I now look at point names and see if those help me refine my strategy. That is how I arrive at first at kidney 6, based on both its name and the capacity of the area to send a suction-like action up the inside of the legs. I am basically looking at whether the ancients might have also had some similar thinking, because if they did, and the point name reflects that idea, there is a good chance that someone else has found that it also has some clinical applications, and that means it has a better chance of working for me also. It has a history. It has a track record. Because I come from a background of yoga, dance, and Alexander technique, this sense of the upright posture is one that is natural for me to investigate, and it is a central theme in how I work. It may not feel so important or easy to work with for other people. My training offers me some abilities to work things out in my own body in ways that may not be so obvious or accessible to others. Even for those for whom this seems to be esoteric and weird, we know that the current trend of having people sit on large balls as a way to release pain and tension in the body. The ball pretty much forces us to have a better contact with the floor and maintain space in our body. The woman sitting on the ball on the right side looks like she's at some counter, and she's not your typical ball sitter. And you can easily see the difference in tension between the two women. The one on the left, there's an easefulness and an openness in the body. The one on the right, where the feet are not on the floor, basically has all this contortion and tension in her. You can experiment with this on patients with pain issues. You will find that many of them, when they sit, they might have their toes touching the floor, but the heels are not. They're off the floor often producing tension in the calves. Ask them to sit at the front edge of the chair and then to send their heels down and bring their awareness to the area between the thighs and to the perineal floor. In many cases, they will say, oh, 
the pain is easier now. The same is true with releasing the tension in the eyes, asking the patient to allow the vision to come into their eyes rather than sending their eyes out to grasp what they're seeing. This does not work as fast for pain issues, but it is excellent for any issue involving anxiety. Of course, they cannot maintain this, but they got a tool to work with. And what you got is some encouragement to further investigate these ideas.